Hello world, my name is Andy Silvers and in this video we're going to talk about the new Dell XPS 8960 desktop. All right, welcome to the channel. For those who don't know, I am an author and tech reviewer. Uh, if you want to support the channel directly, as I am not currently monetized, please check out my books available in the video description. I have books for kids, and I have uh, one for adults, and I have another one for adults that I'm writing right now. So please consider supporting the channel by supporting my work directly. All right, so today I have been fortunate enough to get my hand on the Dell XPS 8960 desktop computer. It is a sort of premium slash mid-tier to high-end uh, PC. It has a Intel Core i7-13700 and an RTX 3050 GPU. Now the reason I'm covering this product is because I want to talk about its place in the overall Dell lineup and I want to talk about specifically what the value of the XPS desktop line even is, considering that if you're a gamer, you're more likely to purchase the Alienware lineup of computers from Dell. So this is a pretty big package uh, from Dell. And uh, I'm going to explain a bunch of the, uh, the reason that I got this particular unit and we're going to talk about its place in the market uh, as well as doing a review. So I'm going to do a benchmark section of the video where I run a bunch of tests. So you can see here, pretty bog standard keyboard. I know it has plastic over it, but those keys feel very soft. So I'd be curious to see just how good they actually are. I suspect not amazing. All right, and then here is the actual desktop itself. Not exactly a tiny computer. Let's see if my tiny little hand is capable of getting this thing out of here. That's going to be that's going to be the ultimate test of endurance. All right, so here is the actual desktop itself. Like I said, it's a Dell XPS desktop. Dell make a variety of different computers, and they also own the... <laughs> ah. They also own the Alienware brand, so if you're looking for a gaming desktop from Dell, Odds are you're going to be interested in the Alienware lineup. However, what I wanted to do was take a look at a desktop that can be a bit more, shall we say, business friendly perhaps, while also simultaneously having the ability to game pretty well in theory. The peel does not come off particularly easy. At least, unless I'm just missing something, which is possible, but it looks like this isn't going to be one of those satisfying ASMR peels like I know that y'all probably wish. Alright, so there's probably some more peels on here somewhere, but let's do a generalized look at the desktop. We have on the front a pretty decent port selection, full-size SD card, three USB Type-A ports. They all appear to be USB 2.0 a USB-C port, uh, it looks like 10 gigabit per second from what I can tell, and a headphone microphone combo jack. And on the back of the Dell XPS desktop, we have the rest of the I.O. We have several more USB Type-A ports, some of these are USB 3. We have a good selection of audio uh, inputs in here, which is nice. A full-size display port and an ethernet jack. I suspect it's one gigabit ethernet just because this isn't the highest end uh, workstation or desktop. And right here is the NVIDIA RTX 3050 graphics card, a pretty low end card but it does support ray tracing and it has three display ports and one HDMI included. 
So we're going to definitely take a look at that graphics card in more detail in a minute. And down here you have your power supply input. So let's go ahead and open it up and take a look inside. All right, now getting inside the desktop is relatively easy. All I had to do was undo one screw. It's a captive screw, which means it doesn't come all the way out. And the mechanism that Dell has employed here is this little latch that you pull back and boom, the side panel comes off. All right, so now I've got the hefty metal side panel off. So that's step one. And now inside the desktop, you can see it's a pretty bog standard layout in here. I'm going to try to come over here and tilt it where you can see the inside. We've got two RAM sticks and only two RAM slots, it looks like. We've got a pretty teeny weeny graphics card right over there. We have a boot uh, M.2 SSD, the included Wi-Fi 6E card, and it looks like a pretty simple layout. Uh, as for expanded storage, we have two terabytes of, of um, 3.5 inch spinning hard drive space up here at the top. And as you can see, there's an enclosure already built in for you if you want to add another one. So that means you could theoretically have you know, a pretty substantial amount of storage in this thing, which is nice. There's a spare M.2 uh, SSD slot right there. All right, so we're going to start by taking out the graphics card. It is relatively easy to do. You just remove this right here, this cover for the PCIe slots. Uh, in this case, there are only two PCIe slots, one by 16, one by 8, it looks like. And right now we have a pretty rinky-dink RTX 3050 in here with a single, uh, looks like a single 6-pin power cable, but there is another one, so you can expand that if need be. Here is our RTX 3050 graphics card. It is a dual slot, um, regular height, full height graphics card, but it is not particularly long. This appears to be a Dell creation. So for example, a lot of graphics cards will have, will basically be uh, the actual uh, GPU die will be created, of course, by NVIDIA, but then the shroud, the housing that goes around it, will be created by a number of NVIDIA's partners. So that might include, for example, EVGA or a number of other companies that create these shrouds. PNY, for example, can create shrouds. So this looks to be a custom Dell solution uh, with a single fan right here. And so I will do some benchmarking on that and see how it performs. Uh, yes, okay, so there are two uh, by 8 slots, not just one, and then there's one full-sized by 16 uh, PCIe slot in this desktop. So it's pretty nice. It looks like it is Samsung RAM, which is pretty good stuff. This is the full desktop version. Uh, right now I have 8 gigabytes of DDR5, uh, 4800 megahertz or mega transfer per second. RAM installed in here. Both slots are being used, which is good. So that get, should give us the maximum theoretical performance. So this PC is something that I can absolutely see a lot of grandparents and parents buying for their children, particularly coming up with Christmas coming around the corner. Something like this would be great for um, the kids to share potentially so that they can do their schoolwork as well as be able to game. Uh, my unit here has a oddball 460 watt uh, power supply. It is a proprietary non-modular power supply, which is obviously unfortunate as it means that this could potentially become an e-waste at some point in the future. However, at least the core components are largely upgradable. Uh, when you configure this with uh, Dell's configurator, there's actually a number of different options. You can even go up to an RTX 4090 uh, GPU in here if you want to. You also have the 3070, 3060, 4070, and uh, I believe 4070 Ti amongst a few others. The cheapest GPU would be the 1650 um, with 4 gigabytes of VRAM. This 3050 has 8 gigabytes of VRAM, which is basically the minimum you need to be able to run AAA titles comfortably. 
Uh, so this computer is interesting because it has a lot of the specs of a lot of gaming computers, but the question is, does it have the performance? Does it have the airflow, for example? It appears on the surface that the airflow is pretty reasonable. There are two relatively large fans in here. Uh, there's one at the front, and there is ventilation up there. And then there's more than just this cutout right here. If, all, if this is all there was, I'd be a bit nervous. And on the back, there is a pretty sizable amount of airflow and another relatively large fan. However, I worry about the CPU a little bit. You can see this is a obviously stock cooler and a pretty rinky-dink looking stock cooler. So I do wonder how that particular cooler will uh, handle performance. Uh, however, that can be upgraded. But it is interesting that for a 13700 uh, CPU that they didn't include a better CPU cooler. Now you can configure this with water cooling which certainly would do the trick but it makes me wonder how the air cooling will work because there's definitely the Z height uh, in the chassis to put in something quite a bit taller and a bit more effective. But I will test the thermals and performance like I say and we'll see how well that does. So if you go to a big box store like um, Best Buy and you just pick it up it'll have whatever power supply is included. But if you want to buy this computer, let's say with the 3050, which is what I have because you don't have the budget for a nicer one, and then in the future you're like, well, now I'm ready, now I have some extra money saved up, I want to put a 4080 in there. Well, it's going to be tricky because the power supply is non-modular, so you're going to have to figure out a way to upgrade that. People have done it, but it is kind of a challenge. So I would suggest or at least recommend considering going to Dell's configurator for this and other devices similar to it. Most YouTubers only do like one Cinebench run and then call it a day. But in my experiences, Cinebench runs do vary greatly between different runs and even different months. So I'm going to do uh, several Cinebench runs on the Dell XPS, and I'm also going to do some on the Lenovo Legion Slim 7i Gen 7. Not because I'm directly comparing the two, because the likelihood of two people actually having to choose between these two products is extremely slim. Instead, I'm going to compare these two just to give you a generalized reference frame. So I'm going to start with the desktop, which is the Dell XPS desktop, and I'm going to start doing a test without any monitoring tools or anything open in the background. All right, and the test is complete, and I got a score of just over 16,700 multicore, which is quite good. For reference, my old HP ZBook, uh, with an uh, 11th Gen Core i7, 11800H, got just over uh, 11,900, just under 12,000, more specifically. So that's pretty good, but it also shows a big generational leap just between 11th and 12th Gen. Okay, now here's where things get interesting. I'm going to do a run again on the desktop with the Hardware Info 64 running. It's a free uh, to download app. I would recommend that you download it. All right, now, right now we're pulling about 200 watts on the desktop. Let's see if that goes down. I bet it will probably because of thermal throttling. The temps are up. All right, now we're dropping down to about 60 to 67 watts on average. See where it goes. Uh, this is going to keep our CPU at a reasonable 75 degrees, and I will talk about that a little bit more later. Oh, crap. Oh, luck ran out. All right, so you can see the wattage stays at about 60 to 70 when the test ends, but the score is about like a 1,000 points lower. So why? Well, let's check the laptop. So I have the Lenovo Legion Slim 7i right here. And while this is not a smackdown between the two, it does give us more context for the scores. So I'm going to do a run right now. Okay, so I just finished the first run and I made a huge mistake. Uh, I forgot to set the limit, uh, the time limit, so it just did one single render and I got a 16,200 score, which is quite good, but that's not a real fair comparison. So I'm going to change the settings. Okay, now I've got the settings correct, and you can see it's spiking up to about 112 watts, which is lower than the desktop. Of course, the desktop spiked to 200 watts, and the power brick on the Lenovo literally can't. It's only a 170-watt brick in the first place. So we know that's not going to be as high. Let's see here. The CPU is a lot hotter, though. Let's see if it cools down. 
And I want to note that this is all being done in the Lenovo Vantage th uh, Best Performance Mode or Max Performance Mode in the Advantage software. Wow. All right, the CPU is hovering at around 90 watts consistently. So I will explain why the temps are odd in a second, but I just want to say that this is impressive for a laptop with a 170-watt brick, like I mentioned. Okay, let's see. All right, uh, now the test is finished, and I got a score of 15,500, or roughly that, which is good, but the temps were pretty high. So let's do let's do something different. Let's see if we can get the score even better on the laptop. So what I'm going to do to try to improve the score without significantly quote unquote cheating is I'm going to close Chrome, which was actually open in the background, which is my mistake. And then I'm going to turn off Microsoft's security stuff like Microsoft Windows Defender smart screen and a few other things. I'm going to have those off in the background because if you're using a piece of software you're used to, it's probably going to be trustworthy. So I'm going to turn that off. And then there's something interesting. So on the this specific model of laptop, it is not easy, quote unquote, to overclock the i7-12700H. Even if you download Intel XTU, it won't let you do it because Intel XTU is designed for HK and HX CPUs that can be overclocked. But in the BIOS of this Lenovo, I can turn on something called Performance Plus. And what this does is it cranks the CPU to the max. It's kind of like a pre-built overclock or CPU overclock without you having to tune any parameters, quote unquote. It just overclocks it. But will it actually give us better performance? So let's go ahead and do a test now. All right, so I let this, the laptop cool off before I did this test, and we can see a spike of 126 watts at the start, which is definitely higher than the about 112 that it spiked to before. So let's see what temperature it settles to. All right, so now it's settled to about 90 watts, kind of like before. So I don't know what the score will be, if it'll be any different. But I am actively cooling the laptop, just to let you know. But it is uh, with, a, with a cheap you know, Amazon laptop cooler. It's nothing fancy or expensive. And the reason I'm doing it is because the desktop, of course, it also has the same advantage, right? It has a CPU with a full-on cooler bolted to it, you know. So it is it is fair to just put a cheap laptop cooler underneath the the laptop for the test. All right, that's it. So the score is higher this time. It's about sixteen thousand five hundred, which is almost the same as the desktop. The desktop has a higher power budget, right, and more cores. So the cooler is man managing the temperature. So, yeah, it would seem that this, the conclusion here is not that the cooler in here sucks, although I would upgrade it. It might be the BIOS. It might be Dell. Dell might be power limiting the chip in this particular unit. So they're not giving the 13700 um, the, let's say, 90 watts that my 12700 in the laptop is getting. So that's Dell's decision from the looks of things. Now, when you configure yours, you can configure this particular XPS desktop with, say, a 13700K or a 13900K, which I would probably recommend if you want the best performance. Not just because it's a K, but because it looks like Dell's just not going to give it the watts that it wants or needs unless you do this. As for my laptop, it did a great job. Yes, it was hot, but the CPU is designed to handle higher temperatures, and it's not going to be it's not going to be hot all the time unless you're constantly rendering stuff. All right, and for kicks and giggles, I'm going to show you a quick uh, Geek ben Geekbench 6 uh, result. Um, I ran the CPU on the desktop. That we're going back to the desktop now. Uh, I had the GPU in Vulkan and OpenCL, and I did a quick G uh, CPU test as well. So I'm getting tongue-tied. Um, you can see the results on the screen. All right, now let's do something a bit more fun in real world. So I put DaVinci Resolve on both PCs, my laptop and my desktop, and I'm going to test some rendering performance. So I shot some 4K footage in RAW on a $30,000 red digital cinema camera, and I put exactly four minutes of footage on the timeline. This is the original red code RAW, 
and it's on the timeline, and I, I basically just duplicated the same clip like three times and then cropped the end of it. So just so that it was exactly four minutes, so you could do the math more easily to figure out how long things are taking. Anyway, with that done, let's check that out. So we have the same clip three times. I'm going to color grade it manually and render out a single video. So the original shot was shot in DCI 4K RAW uh, at a 16-bit depth. And I'm creating a final render that is DCI 2K, 2048 by 1080. And it's going to be uh, rendered out to an, an MOV, ProRes MOV, an H.265, which is the new hotness for uh, video codecs. It's, it's compatible with most modern hardware. Okay, so that just finished, and it looks like it's about a minute and 57 seconds on my laptop to do the render. So that's pretty good, but now I'm going to do the same thing on the Dell XPS. I'm careful to copy the exact same settings and render modes. Uh, I, I was extremely careful to just go through color setting by color setting and to tweak contrast, uh, saturation, whatever it is, make sure it's the exact same thing. All right, great news. I got a 1 minute 46 second window on the Dell XPS desktop. That's faster, but not by much. Now, does this prove the Dell is mediocre? No, of course not. I just did a couple of cherry pick tests. But what this does demonstrate is that out of the box, you're not going to get significantly more performance than a pretty, you know, reasonably high end laptop. It's just not going to happen. The Dell XPS is high-end, sure, but it's business high-end. If you do want a game or you do want to do just raw performance, you're probably going to have to get a uh, Dell Alienware PC, although those have their own issues, uh, or some other PC. So the Dell XPS desktop, while fairly reasonably upgradable and fairly modern, it just, in these tests, doesn't seem to be demonstrating like top-notch performance. All right, now we're going to do a few gaming benchmarks, but I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Uh, and the main reason for that is because of the GPU being a 3050. So I'm going to allow you to see some of the footage. All right, so here's the thing. The Dell XPS desktop, it has a 3050 in it right now, which is a very bare-bones GPU. Uh, in many cases, you would be better off getting the 16, uh, I believe it's the 1650 Super or 1660 Super. That is the cheapest offering that Dell offers with this PC. Because if you have a 3050, you're not going to be able to use ray tracing in any substantive, substantive way without getting like 20 FPS. So in that case, you're going to be playing traditionally rasterized games. So you're going to be playing them in a rasterized mode. So in that case, I'd probably recommend getting the 1650, save some money and upgrade it to like a 3070 at least uh, down the road. However, on Dell's website, you can choose a number of different cards. You can choose a 3070, 3080, I believe it is. Um, you can go to a 4070, 4070 Ti, and of course, even a 4090. So you can actually put a 4090 into your Dell XPS desktop, which is pretty impressive. I do not have that unit to test. Um, however, I do. I would be curious about thermals on that. Uh, I think Dell does appear to have done a pretty good job with the thermal solution, making sure that the side panel next to the GPU does have perforations, which is, I think, one of the most important things to keeping the GPU cooled when it is just surrounded by metal. Uh, however, I can't necessarily speak to or recommend that configuration. With the 3050, you can play games like CSGO and Apex Legends. Certainly, those are relatively light, quote-unquote, games. And you can play things like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which I um, am playing here in this demonstration. Now, I tried to run the Shadow of the Tomb Raider uh, benchmark on the Dell XPS. And as you can see here, it is crashing. It just literally would not do it. It just it wouldn't do it. I tried three or four times. So I eventually gave up and just played the game. Now, I have a 60 hertz external monitor. So unfortunately, the game locked it at 60 hertz, so I can't necessarily tell you exactly what the performance is going to be. But on the Lenovo laptop, you can see some of the footage here. I was able to set the game to 1920 by 1200, and I was able to get upwards of 90 or so FPS. And on the Lenovo, I was able to run the benchmark successfully. All right, so that's my review of the Dell XPS 8960 desktop. It's not the most in-depth review because I have a very limited amount of time with the computer, 
But I tried to cover a lot of the basics and I tried to cover them in sort of an Andy way. Because I'm not necessarily going to be using it for gaming if I were to buy one. Now, would I buy this? The answer is no, because I don't tend to be the biggest Dell fan. I sort of prefer Lenovo and HP's pre-built desktops. But if I but I do like the design of this one. So what I would probably do and what I might recommend for some of you is to go to the configurator and configure it manually rather than buying it from, say, Best Buy as a pre-built. The 460-watt uh, power adapter that's in there, um, it just isn't quite enough for the future. Even It may not even be enough for now. So um, if you are going to buy this, upgrade it to the 1,000-watt, even if all you have is like a 3050 or something, just so that you have the option to easily upgrade in the future. I just don't know it's necessarily going to give you the max performance. And again, you might be thinking, well, of course it's not. But remember, it has the options for K-series 13th gen chips and a 4090. So it's not like on paper it shouldn't. It just seems like Dell may be handicapping it to some extent. However, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comments. I will do my best to respond to them. Uh, if you think I made a mistake in the video, please let me know. I'm imperfect and I'm still learning, so be aware of that. Glimpse into the future. I'm going to be reviewing in the future a Minis Form Micro PC, one of those 0.7 liter desktops you can hold in your hand. So that's going to be really fun. So get subscribed to watch that video, and that video is that desktop I will be keeping forever, so I can do as many tests on it as y'all think I should. So uh, stay tuned to get subscribed, and I'll see you in the next video.